Okay, I'm going to get your front timing belt cover. Alright, I'm going to make sure this thing is clean. Okay, more so on the inside. Okay, now I've already done that. So you want to make sure you get all your dust out, clean it out, put some brake clean on it, make sure that everything is clean. Alright, now I'm going to take a little bit of uh, silicone spray. There's a grommet right here, rubber grommet. Fits right in there. Again, I'm going to spray it up. The reason for that, like I said, is just to keep the rubber soft over the years. Okay, I'm going to take care of the excess. All right. Now let's stick them back in there. Alright, there's a little one right in there. Okay, again, get your access up. Okay. It'll soak down in there. Alright, and also, let's do a little bit on this here rubber all the way around. That'll help kind of seal it a little bit and also uh, make it soft over the years, keeps it pliable. Okay, again, you want to make sure that you get the excess up. Okay, and then let's go back and get my air hose. Take his timing belt cover, bring it down, make sure you slide it over this post down here, okay? Then come back and snap your clips in place. There's one here, here, and then one over here. Now get your two timing belt front cover bolts. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on there, okay? Let's go ahead and let's get him started up. Get the other one, put a little bit on him. And you could probably get this bolt a little bit easier from underneath. <clears throat> Let's just give you a shot of uh, this other front timing belt cover that's on the lower left. Okay. If I hadn't mentioned it, these are 10 millimeter heads on these timing belt uh, front covers, bolts, and the torque on these bolts are 53 inch pounds. And this are already there. So now let's get the bottom one. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this plate, timing belt little cover plate. It's gonna fit right in here. Get your bolt, 10 millimeter head. Also, let's get some Loctite on that. And come back. Just snug it up good. All right, next step, I'm gonna put the engine mount in. Okay. OK. 
Okay, everything looks good. Get you a little bit of Loctite. Got to put a Loctite on all of this. Now these here four bolts are all the same. Goes in the bottom. And you want to try to clean these here threads out. Get as much of this old thread locker out as you can. Get it off your threads. I'm going to go right in there. Okay, all the heads on the bolts, the nuts in this bolt, 14 millimeter. All right, the torque on all of these is going to be 33 foot pounds. Running back, make sure they're all okay. Okay, he's done. Now we're going to take and put the crankshaft pulley on. Let's put it up there. I'm putting Loctite on the bolts. Okay, now we're going to tighten them up. These are going to be torqued up to, to uh, 15 foot pounds. That's 180 inch pounds. And um, also, this is a 6 millimeter hex bit. So you can just use a 17 millimeter wrench, hold it on the crankshaft. Okay, there's one. Let's see if I can get that one up there. There. Okay, now what we're going to put on now is a serpentine belt. Now this is not drawing the scale as far as the way the pulleys are located, but this should be good enough. Start around your power steering pulley, go around your AC compressor, go around your crank pulley, and what you want to do, I found this easier, just go ahead and take your tensioner, go ahead and pull it uh, clockwise, it's a 15 millimeter uh, wrench, and what you want to do is pull it over. Get your helper while you're pulling this over. Then go ahead and then just put it around your alternator and it'll slide right on. And uh, this is what we got right now. So this is where we're at. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, next step we're going to put the cleaner box in. This is going to be this item right here. 
Okay. All right. One of the bolts are going to go right here. The other bolt's going to go right over here. So we're going to take a duck here, get them placed over that one, get that one lined up. That looks good down there. Now, your bolts, this one right here, and what's got the shoulder is going to go down here. This one is going to go right over here. This one down in here, remember this is the one that had the shoulder on it. Okay. As I mentioned, this one here is a 10 millimeter, just Let's snug it up. That's good. The one down here on the right is a 12 millimeter. Again, just snug them up. All right, let's take our air cleaner. It's a new one here. And just drop them in there. All right, we're going to take the top of our air cleaner box. And we're going to sit him right on the top. Okay. All right. An eight millimeter socket will take care of these. Let's snug them up. Okay, now we're going to put the resonator on. First, we're going to put it down over top of the throttle body. Let's pull this back. Maybe we'll put them over here first, I guess. Yeah. Okay, he's good. Let's go ahead and get our hose hooked up. Okay. Now let's tighten up some hose clamps. Let's go ahead and tighten this one up. This is a quarter inch socket. Okay. Now let's get this one that's up here on the throttle body. This is also a quarter inch socket. This is on the throttle body of this clamp. Get this hose clamp slid back up on this ventilation hose right there okay looking good okay now that we got the resonator hooked up let's go ahead and get the incoming air temperature sensor hooked up wire bail on the top push it down let it go now it's locked okay let's put our splash shield on all right this is how it's going to go just like that. Alright. You want to put this piece here, right in between behind there. And let's find a hole. I'm going to put this bolt right here, right in there. Okay. Now we got another bolt, the same kind of bolt. He's gonna go over here. All right, I got some new fasteners here. My 
practice time you use one these fasteners about one shot deal and then they're over with so I've got some new ones here this is what I'm using right now okay. made by Dorman okay let's carry you up underneath the car we've got two up underneath here All right, there's one here, and there'll be one here. I've already got this one started. All right, he's gonna stay there. Let's see if we can't get one more up in there. I believe that's got them. All right, now let's go back and get those bolts tightened up. All right, 10 millimeter head on those. Get those snugged up. Okay, that's nice and solid, I like it. All right, we are done. Okay, the car is all back together now, and uh, before you start this thing up, make sure that you go ahead and get your coolant back in there. This is also a good time to flush it. This is like a 60,000 mile interval on the belt chain, so it'd probably be a good idea to go ahead and get your coolant flushed out. What I like to do is after you get it drained out, I, put, I go back and I put distilled water in it. I run the engine, get it up to operating temperature, make sure you got your heater on high, and this will let it circulate through your heater coil. Then after it gets up to temperature, come back, let it drain, and depending on how, how much uh, antifreeze you see in the uh, when you drain it out, you may want to do another, uh, fill it back up with the steel water. Usually I do it like a couple of times, then after that, then I come back and then I'll fill it up with a 50-50 mix of uh, antifreeze. This size are complete. Lug nuts, got them torqued up. Torque setting on these is 74 foot-pounds, okay? Uh, and as far as the idle relearn, I'm going to put this on, on the uh, video, so I'm going to put it in text, but I'll just show you what we, what we got here. If you look at the very top up here, it says that you got to do an idle relearn procedure if you do any one of these here four things. If you replace the ECM, that's your computer. If you replace the throttle body, or if you clean it, well, we did clean the throttle body. And if you disconnect the battery cable, or if you pull out an ECM fuse, any one of those things you do, then you're going to have to do a relearn. Now, here's where it says turn the ignition on, and then you reset the adaption values using the scan tool. Well, I don't have a Suzuki uh, factory scan tool to reset that. <clears throat> so what I did is I, hook, of course, hook up the battery, switches off now so at this point the ignition switch is off anyway so we went on down here to number four turn the ignition on for five seconds i did do that all right then i turned the ignition off for 15 seconds i did do that then we started the engine in park all right did that now we allowed it to run until the engine coolant got up to 185 degrees and what i did is i just let it go up until it just stabilized which is uh, right at the middle temperature gauge is right in the middle between cold and hot so once that was done and I knew it wasn't going anymore then I turned and turned the AC on for 10 seconds all right then after that then I took and put the vehicle in drive while you're holding the brake pedal put it in drive now the air conditioner is on also at this point now once you do that then put the turn the AC off for 10 seconds then at that point then you want to take and turn and put it back in park, right, which is what I did. Then I turned the ignition switch off, and it says at this point the idle learn procedure is complete. And I've turned it off and on, cranked it up, and it seems to idle pretty good. Okay, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video. So let me give the little doggies a ride and make them happy. I'll see you guys later.